Hi everyone, I just want to run through your first assignment for the semester. Um, so let's go through it now together. And of course you can play this video at twice speed if it makes life a little bit easier for you, or you can come back and check the details anytime, or alternatively you can flick me an email. Apologies for the sound quality, I don't have my usual headset with me, um, so you'll just have to make do. That might mean you hear a few trucks driving past outside as well. All right, so first of all, as always, if you go in here to the classroom, into the classwork tab, and then you'll find assignment one, the creative short story. It is worth 30%. So just fire up that Google Doc there and it'll take you to something that looks very much like this because it should be exactly this. So this is your first task. It is a creating task. It's creative writing um, and it's 30%. So if you miss this assignment, uh, you've lost 30% of your overall marks. There is no chance of an A very, very slim chance of a B. So it's really, really important if you want to do a good grade, you need to get this one in. Um, in terms of the due date, you are looking at the Friday of week six, whoops, um, which is the 11th of March, January, February, March. Yes, I can, I'm really good with the calendar, me. Um, and that's due at one minute to midnight on the Friday. So that means that I will log in on Saturday to check to see who's submitted what, and I will send a message Saturday, Sunday, Monday, depending on when I've got time to, um, to remind you if you haven't submitted anything. But it also means that if your assignment is late, even one or two minutes late, I have to take five points off. Uh, those wonderful students who had me last year know just how quick I am on that one. It's really important to me get your work in on time so that I don't have to take those five points off you. If there's any reason you're not going to get it in on time, please talk to me at least the day before or make sure that you've got a medical certificate. Those are the only ways I can get you any special consideration. Right, so it's really important. Now, the draft is due the week before, sorry, the week before that, so that's week five, which is the start of March, okay? So if you want to submit a draft, and I really strongly encourage you to do, make sure you get that one in place. You're aiming for about 1,000 to 1,200 words on the creative itself, and the rationale is about 600 words. All right. Um, usual information about academic integrity. I'm sure I don't need to talk to you about this, but just in case, there's a couple of links here. I want to draw your attention to. If you're not sure what academic integrity means, please click on the academic integrity policies at the BSSS on point one in that little box there. Um, please familiarize yourself with the concept of plagiarism. It means you cannot copy work even conceptually from other locations. It also means you must reference all of your ideas in a bibliography. All right, that's the boring stuff over, hopefully. Onto the assignment itself. So I'm going to break this down into a couple of steps. The first step is learning intentions, then learning dispositions, and then finally the overall instructions for the task itself. So feel free to zoom back and forward depending on what you feel is most appropriate for you. So step one, learning intentions. In class, as you know, we've been studying the concept of detective fiction um, and how it influences the creation of texts, the conventions, etc. So this assignment is designed to allow you to put your knowledge into action, demonstrating your understanding through whatever piece you choose to create. You'll be able to show how well you understand detective fiction by how effectively your text adheres to the conventions of the genre you've studied. All right. So that's why we're doing this assignment. In terms of its connection to the Arendelle College Learner Profile, really we're asking you to seek challenge by taking a risk and trying something that might be a little bit outside of your creative comfort zone. Remember, we know that when you work through challenge, when you work to overcome obstacles, you grow. Even if you don't necessarily overcome that obstacle, you will learn tools and strategies for the future. So we really want you to be seeking challenge and pushing yourself a little bit here. All right, the important bit, the instructions. Because it's a creative response, this task is broken up into two segments. The first is the response itself. The second is the statement of aims or rationale. We're calling it a statement of aims for this one. So part one, your task is to write one chapter of a story from the detective fiction genre. 
you will create an original short text, so a short story of 1,000 to 1,200 words, or a play script, or a film. If you do a film, you're aiming for about 5 to 10 minutes to demonstrate your understanding of the detective fiction genre. Your creation must be a piece based on your studies this semester. You'll be expected to experiment with text structures and language features relating to the detective fiction genre. You must demonstrate your understanding of genre through representation of core elements of detective fiction, so that's our conventions or tropes. Development of tension or conflict between the author and the reader, how are you laying down your clues and your um, mystery for us, how are you manipulating us. Your examination of the role of the detective, so what is the detective, how do they need to be presented to the audience, and slash or uh, plot, characterization and narrative structure. Okay which is usual for writing a short story. It is strongly recommended that you focus on emulating the conventions of the genre. So don't try and break any of the rules this time around. I don't. I, I know you might have a really strong gut grasp on the conventions and you want to play around with it, um, and you're welcome to play around with it within reason, but I want you to adhere to the conventions, please, um, as best as possible. Okay, try not to break them for any particular reason. If you are considering breaking the conventions, please come and have a chat to me beforehand so we can talk about your options and the best way to go about doing it. All right, back to the instructions. Rather than writing a whole story, you will write one chapter of a larger story. This will allow you to ensure there's sufficient detail to demonstrate your mastery of the writing style without having to rush the mystery. Now we know from our reading of all of the, sorry, the two short stories we read, neither of them came in at under 1,200 words. So we know it's very difficult to set up all the characters and the mystery and go through our investigation and have a satisfactory denouement in only a 1,000 words. So what I'm asking you to do is to basically pick one section of the story to tell. Now, whether that's the opening chapter where we're introduced to the narrator and detective and the beginning of the mystery, or somewhere in the middle where our detective is investigating the crime scene or talking to people to gather clues or evidence, or maybe you're leading up to do the denouement, okay? You're showing us the, the revelation of what the solution was, what actually happened, and then the explanation of all the clues and red herrings along the way, okay? So pick one chapter of the story to tell. Once you've got your piece done, dusted, proofread a thousand times and ready to go, you can write your statement of aims. Your statement of aims allows me, the assessor, to understand what your intentions were. So you have to answer the following three questions in four to six hundred words. Okay. Now, I would say for most of you, you should be cleaving pretty closely to the 600 word limit. Uh, obviously, 10% either side. So. How, question one, how does your creation reflect what we've studied in class? Include quotes or in-text references from the text we've studied to support your statements. So are you, in fact, drawing your inspiration from Watson's behavior in The Lazarus Child, wherein he basically leads Sherlock by the nose to a mystery rather than risking him destroying property? Um, what, what are you looking for there? Did that inspire you. Great. Show me the quote. Damn. Move on. Okay. Okay. Question two. How have you demonstrated an understanding of detective fiction tropes and patterns in your piece? So once again, bring it right back to the conventions. Pick one convention and sh prove to me how you have demonstrated that convention in your story. Okay. If you do more than one, you're going to run out of words. Remember, you've only got about 200 words per question. All right, finally, question three, in what way has completing this assessment helped you grow in regards to one aspect of the EC learner profile? And I've linked that so you can go through to that. Um, so you might choose to discuss how you have sought challenge, not seeked challenge, seeked is not a word, sought challenge. Um, so how have you sought challenge in stepping up and undertaking this assignment, never giving up, really being persistent, you know, that kind of stuff. Remember, always in-text references for all of your work, all of your evidence, which must be structured author, date, page in brackets. The assessment criteria is there, and I've got the rubric 
down the bottom. I'm just going to really briefly run through that. So I'm assessing the response itself on your use of techniques and features relevant to medium. So if you're making a film, how's your camera angle? How's your uh, mise-en-scene? Um, how effective are your actors in their acting? Uh, second one there connects to themes or ideas of the text. So again, this is where you are connecting to your use of the conventions of detective fiction. How well have you demonstrated them? And finally, imaginative and original creative vision with distinctive purpose. In other words, you, to do really well in this, you don't just give me a carbon copy of Sherlock Holmes. If you give me a Sherlock Holmes story, you're going to get in around the limited evidence area. Okay, right down the bottom, the E. If you give me a brand new detective and narrator pair and their interactions are really interesting and kind of fresh, then you're going to get up around the A, B kind of area if you do something clever with it. Um, in terms of the statement of aims, first of all, question one is being ass assessed on that first row, your analysis of the stimulus. Questions two and three are being um, assessed on the second row, so analyzing your own piece and reflecting on your learning. And then, of course, I am assessing your written grammar, so your spelling, your punctuation, your paragraphing, etc, etc. Please use paragraphs. I will be ever so upset if I just get one single page with no paragraph breaks. Now the last thing I want to draw your attention to is just on this previous page. Um, two very important pieces. I've already spoken about late submission. You will lose five points per day up to seven days. And after that point on the eighth day, the maximum score you can get is a notional zero. So it's really important. Okay. Notional zero is for all intents and purposes, the lowest actual score earned by another student minus one. Okay. So it's um, not a great one to get for you. Okay, hence it's called a notional zero. It's the bottom of the bell curve. Um, we can talk about the maths later sometime. Uh, the other one I want to draw your attention to is the concept of completion of assessment items. And the phrase from the BSSS Policy and Procedures Manual is students are expected to substantially complete and submit all assessment items. So for the purposes of our task, a substantial attempt at this task is 500 words of a short story okay if you do 499 words you have not made a substantial attempt at this task and it will count as a non-submission i've had a number of students in the past v grade because they do a non-substantial attempt at a task please um, if you're in a situation where you're struggling to reach that point, please come and talk to me. I will help you. I will do everything I can to help you get across the line, but I can't solve problems I don't know about. All right, that's the assignment in a nutshell. I hope I've given you a fairly good idea of what to do. You can flick me an email if you've got any questions or catch up with me when we're in class. I would love to have a chat about your ideas. We'll have a couple of lessons where we can talk about it, but for the most part, you're on your own writing this in your own time. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I will see you in the near future, I hope.